All right, ahora sí. Yeah. I'm so excited to have you here, Valerie. Me too, I'm so excited to be yeah. here. So, this is, is it your first time in New York? No, it is not my first time in New York, but I do feel like a little kid in a candy store right now because I'm so excited to be back and it's just like so fun here. So, yeah. All right, so Valerie, you're a, a country Latina singer. Yes. That's a mouthful, by the way. <laughs> so tell me a little bit. I know you're from El Paso, Texas. Tell me a little bit about that story about growing up in El Paso and how do you became, how do you fell in love with country? Well, um, El Paso is a very interesting place. It's right on the border. Um, it borders a town in Mexico called Juarez. And uh, people don't know this, but people love country music in El Paso and that whole region. Like it's... Um, it, there's a lot of more country culture than, than people would know. My parents actually live on a farm uh, out in the country, and so, so it's very much infused into our culture. So l like growing up with country music and loving country music is not, it's not that strange for a region like El Paso. So I just grew up loving it. It's, um, it's just a, a genre of music that brings me so much healing. And I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I just feel so much resolve and peace listening to country with a lot of things that I've been through in life. Um, so it's just, I, I've just been on this path with country music and it's been really fun and it's been so exciting and is, welcoming. Is your family also into country music? Yeah, my mom especially. Actually, my mom more than everyone else. Like my mom, I would grow up just analyzing Johnny Cash songs with my mom. Like that's what we would do on long drives and just, you know, try to find the deeper meaning. And, And so um, I think a lot of my love for country music came there. And, and honestly, I, since moving to Nashville, it's been such a welcoming um, city to, to my story and to my background. It's kind of been, um, I, I guess you could say, a little bit of a pleasant surprise because you don't know. It's a, it's a little different to have someone who's Latin, you know, passionate about country. And it's not something you see, but people are very, very eager to hear my story. And that's been really amazing. How different it is from El Paso to Nashville? It's just so different. Yes? It's a very different. <laughs> um, Nashville is a, it's a, such a sweet town. Like, people are so nice there. Aren't they? I heard, saw, I heard something yes. before. Yes. It's, it's a real thing. Like, the southern hospitality is real. Um, the food is, is really good. Like, the southern food. I didn't grow up eating a lot of southern food. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of learning how to uh, not eat too much hot chicken. That's the thing. And I didn't, I didn't really grow up eating hot chicken. But like, I now I know that's hot also the, the thing over the, like the fried chicken. And it's like a lot of fattening food. And I'm like, I feel like if I was there, maybe yeah. I would gain so much weight. But you look amazing. Well, thank you. I have to curb my desire for hot chicken. <laughs> 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 When I'm in El Paso, I have to not eat enchiladas green enchiladas and uh, when I'm in Nashville I have to not eat hot chicken and when I'm in New York I it's, have to not eat pizza. It's a struggle. Pizza. It's a real struggle <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are. Exactly, exactly. So I know The Voice was like kind of your big platform into show business in the big show business area but you've been doing music since you were very young. How old were you when you started doing music? So I started singing when I was probably around eight. I would just sing in talent shows and dress up as Disney princesses and and compete in, in every talent show. I just was like, I gotta compete in everything. It was funny. Um, but then when I was around 12 or 13, I started playing guitar. My brother taught me how to play guitar and I started songwriting. And really since then, it's just been nonstop music. I just find myself figuring out a way to like get to something musical no matter where I'm at in life. And so, So now the latest is that I found myself on The Voice. <laughs> and I saw your edition of The Voice, and I'm like, how is she keeping it together? I was just so nervous for you, but you just look great. Were you nervous at all? I was so nervous. I was, I had to practice specifically for the nerves. Because, you know, you have a lot of time, you know, to practice your song, but you get that down. But you know that in the moment, it's going to be the nerves that get you. And so I would practice, I would do push-ups singing my song. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I would do, I would go running, and I'd be like, I fell into a burning ring of 
fire. And it was like, if I can keep my, like, if I can keep pitch while running, then that'll help me when I'm like nervous and, you know, trying to get a chair to turn and my body starts doing things that I don't, I wasn't expecting it to do, like shake or freeze. Like my hand at the stage rehearsal just froze during, like mid song. I'm singing and then I'm like, my hand's not moving from this same weird position, but I have to keep singing. And I'm like, okay, those are the things you need to practice. Like, well, you're almost thinking maybe it's time for some push ups so I can just yeah, pump no, just, her. just just right here on the stage, just start doing push ups. <laughs> and how is that? How is that experience with obviously you turned four chairs, all of them? You did. So how was that experience for you? And after that, what happened after that? Um, it was a really awesome feeling to, uh, it was honestly something I didn't, I didn't, uh, you don't think that really will happen. I think you're so focused on performing your song and you're so just like, I've got to nail this that I don't know. You don't even, I, I really didn't think of the scenario. Like when I have to talk to of all four of them, I just was like, get through the song. But then I, I got through the song and then they were all turned and I was like, okay, what happens now? Oh, they're talking to me. Now I'm talking to them. You know, it's just like, even that was like crazy, just interacting with them. And, and Gwen uh, was my childhood idol. I loved her growing up so much. And so she was just like an angel. All of them were just making these amazing arguments and it just didn't feel real. Like I had to keep telling myself that I wasn't um, watching on television, that I was on stage talking. And uh, it, it, w it was really cool. It was a really nice validating moment in, in my singing career because I, I have been doing it for a while. So to have a four chair moment was, was very rewarding after a lot of work and, and just a lot of, you know, persistence. It was, it was awesome. And I did see that shock on your face of like, I, I feel like <laughs> it just sank in that moment that I'm like, oh my God, I'm up here and now they're all looking at me. It was just like so beautiful to see that. Aww. And you look really pretty in your yellow dress. Thank you. Which now became like a hashtag. Yes, it did. It did. It was it was the yellow dress. I was building it up so much and everyone was so awesome to just like get excited with me about the yellow dress and just yellow hearts everywhere online and and little girls were sending videos in in yellow dresses singing and like it was just so cute. It, it, my it, my all my I called them Val pals. <laughs> they all became this amazing army behind me. And, uh, and it, it, was, it was really awesome. Is that your color, yellow? Do you still have that dress? You know what's crazy? I never used to say that my favorite color was yellow, which is strange because I've sung about this, the color yellow before in other songs that I've written. And I've always loved yellow. And then I was in a yellow dress. And then I realized that I would always say pink was my favorite color. And that's insane. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So good that we incorporated both of your colors yes. in the Hispanic oh, Heritage Month logo. Perfect. We obviously <laughs> did that thinking of you. You know, you know more than I know. I, it's like it's funny realizing your colors. It's like a self-realization. That's amazing. Well, Ping looks obviously really beautiful on you right now. Thank you. So um, I know your new song is "Love Me When You're Lonely." Beautiful song that I have on Thank repeat you. right now because I think we all agree that we've been through that. That one person that calls you when they're drunk in the middle of the night and is like, oh, I really love you and I miss you. And I was like, oh, this song is just a dart to my heart. So what was the inspiration for that song? Or why did you say I have to have this song on my album? You know, I, I wanted to, after my run on The Voice, it was my Love Me When You're Lonely was my, um, you know, premiere single after everything. And I wanted to showcase um, a little bit more of, of the ache and pain that, that I have in me. And I, I feel like the situation, the song of, of not being valued the way you value someone, um, I wanted that to just really be a strong idea. And I, want the, I wanted the desperation to come through, but I also wanted there to be a sense of empowerment, you know, because I think, and it's not just for women, it's for everyone who goes through heartache. But I do feel like as women, sometimes we have to we have to um, have everything figured out, and especially if we're in a bad situation with a relationship. Like, it's almost like, oh, I'm letting this happen to me, you know? And I wanted it to be like, yeah, I acknowledge it, but I'm also kind of calling it out. I'm calling you out. And that's hard for me. It's a little shameful, but at the same time, I feel empowered to say, this is happening. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but I know this is happening. I'm not being valued. And so, yeah, I, I wanted an ache, but an empowerment to come through. And I, I really feel like 
um, we were successful in doing that uh, in, in the, the co-write. I wrote it with a, a hit, a songwriter in Nashville named Justin Ebock, and uh, he, he's written really great songs. So I really felt like we were able to pull that off, and other people who have told me that the way the song speaks to them, and that just means so much to me. That's the whole reason I, I do this, you know. So to have people reach out and say I connect with that, that's, that's where I'm at right now, and I need to figure out what to do. And country music has just that passion in it. And do you think being Latina also gives you that passion through your country music and through the song? Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, country music is a genre of storytelling. Yeah. And uh, it, it honors stories. And so my, my heart is to tell my story as a Latina growing up where I grew up and, and in, through my love of country. And so, yeah, definitely, it's, a, it's country music has been very um, granting me that, that power to, to feel emboldened to tell my story and that, that passion, exactly. It's, it's so, I feel reinforced um, in country music to tell, to tell your journey and your path. And I cannot wait to hear you sing that song later here today. I'm so excited for it. Oh. But right now we're gonna go for some Q&A from an audience. We have a couple of questions right here. Hi, okay. so what, it would, what would be your advice to anyone who wants to start off uh, singing, especially in the uh, Hispanic heritage? You know, I, I would say um, a, a big theme of mine lately has just been to kind of um, on the, to end on the note that we were just talking about, to tell your story and to um, not be, uh, not to not be scared to tell your story. I think that sometimes I've questioned like, well, that's a little different, you know, that's not really done a lot or, you know, what, how are people going to react? I, I would say to just to tell your story about where you're from and you'll be so pleasantly surprised to find that people actually want to know more about you and who you are. Yeah, we have one last question. Here we go. Hi. So uh, how did you pick uh, Johnny Cash uh, as a song to, to do uh, perform at The Voice? And uh, do you have any other artists that you like to do covers for? Yes. I. Um, well, I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan. And uh, I. it was um, kind of a no-brainer to be able to show my voice to the world through a Cash song. I had already actually covered Folsom Prison Blues on YouTube, and that was like a, a real fun cover of mine. So... And I sing Ring of Fire all the time. So doing Ring of Fire was kind of like, just like the, the best way I could present myself to, to the world. And I, I, yeah, he's just, Johnny Cash is just so part of, of my uh, inspiration. So that's kind of how that happened. And um, what, did, what was the second part? Uh, Sorry. Like, are there any other artists that you ah. like to do covers? Oh, I cover so many artists. Um, I'm trying to think of who might have been my other runner-ups to cover on the voice. I can't even remember now. I love um, I love Shania Twain. I love uh, an American artist named Jason, Jason Isabel. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot I like to cover. I like to cover Sheryl Crow. I didn't realize that I ended up singing a lot like Sheryl Crow because I was obsessed with her as a young girl. And then I grew up and people said I sound like her. And I was like, oh, I think it's because I was obsessed with her. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you sing. So stick around because you're going to sing for us today. And thank you so much for thank being here so with much. us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. All right, stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> 